Shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Master, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So today, my fellow brothers and sisters, we're going to be talking about Aaron's ancient prophecy. Okay. Since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, we continue to see the gold contained within it. Everything from true doctrine versus the teachings of rabbinical Judaism to the amazing prophecies about Yeshua HaMashiach and Aharon, Aaron, the first high priest of Yisrael, he prophesied the coming of our great Kohen Haggadol, High Priest Yeshua HaMashiach. So, we're going to be looking at the Testament of Aaron. Testament of Aaron, 4Q540 through 4Q541. So, the 4 stands for the fourth cave. The Q is Qumran. 540 and 541 represents the 540th and 540 first document or scroll that was found in that cave. Okay, so we're going to go Testament of Aaron, column number four. Testament of Aaron, column number four. He says, his, wills, his wisdom will be great. He will make atonement for all the children of his generation. He will be sent to all the sons of his generation. His word will be as the word of heaven. And his teaching will be in accordance with the will of Elohim. His eternal son will burn bright. The fire will be kindled in all the corners of the earth. It will shine into the darkness. Then the darkness will vanish from the earth and the deep darkness from the dry land. They will speak many words against him. There will be numerous lies. They will invent stories about him. They will say shameful things against him. He will overthrow his evil generation, and there will be great wrath. When he arises, there will be falsehood and violence, and the people will wander astray in his days and be confounded. So, we're going to go through this ancient prophecy line by line and see how accurate this prophecy was before Yeshua walked the earth. So, we're going to start with his wisdom will be great. 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 9 through 11 in the complete Jewish scripture says, Elohim gave Solomon exceptional wisdom and understanding, as well as a heart as vast as the sandy beach by the sea. Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of the people from the east, in all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than everyone, wiser than Etan, the Ezra key, and wiser than Heman, uh, Kalkol, and Dara, the sons of Makol, so that his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. Okay, keep that in mind. First Kings chapter 10, verse 1 through 5 in the complete Jewish scriptures. When the queen of Sheba heard what was being said about Solomon because of the name of Yahweh, she came to test him with difficult questions. She arrived in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, accompanied by a very great retinue and entourage, including camels bearing spices and gold in great abundance and precious stones. When she appeared before Solomon, she spoke with him about everything on her heart. And Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. 
after the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, the manner of seating his officials, the manner in which his staff served him, how they were dressed, his personal servants, and his burnt offerings which he offered in the house of Yahweh, it left her breathless. Now with all of that said, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 verse 42 in the Hebrew. And the queen of Sheba will stand up for the day of judgment with this nation and will punish it. For she came from the end of the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And here is one wiser than Solomon. So even though Solomon was the wisest man in the world, the wisdom of Yeshua surpassed his, for he had great wisdom, being uh, the son of Yahweh, El, the son. Okay, hallelujah. He will make atonement for all the children of his generation. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 28 in the Hebrew. And when they sat to eat, Yeshua took the bread, he blessed it and did a prayer of thanksgiving and broke it and said, take and eat for this is my body. And afterwards he took the cup and did a prayer of thanksgiving and gave it to them and said, drink this all of you for this is the blood of the new which will be shed to atone your iniquities. John chapter 8 Verse 36 in the Hebrew. But if the Son makes atonement for you with haste, you will be free men. Hallelujah. He set us free from iniquity with the blood that he shed. John chapter 19, verse 30 in the Hebrew. So when Yeshua had tasted the vinegar, he said, It is completed and ended. And he bowed his head and sent his spirit to his father. Now, let's go to, he will be sent to all the sons of his generation. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24 in the Hebrew. But he answered, I am not sent except to the sheep that are lost, the house of Yisrael. Next, his word will be as the word of heaven. John chapter 1, verse 9 through 11 in the Hebrew. He is truly a lamp, and he shines on every man in this world. He is eternal, and the world was made by him, but the world does not recognize him neither the power of his words, even those who do not receive him. Hallelujah. He is eternal. He made the, word, the world, and the world does not recognize him, nor the power of his words, for he is from the Shamaim, the heavens. Mark chapter 11, verse 10 in the Hebrew Mark chapter 11, verse 10 in the Hebrew. And those who were walking before him and those who were following after him cried out and said, Hoshianu, save us, blessed Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. And blessed be the king who is a savior from the heavens. The Hebrew manuscript reads a lot differently than others, but hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. And blessed be the king who is a savior from the heavens. John chapter 6, verse 36 through 38 in the Hebrew. But this I say to you, because you saw me, and yet you did not believe in me. Everyone the Father gave to me comes to me. And he who comes to me, I will not cast out. For I, 
I descend from the heavens, not in order to do my will, only the will of him who has sent me. And then there's also another prophecy found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, by the way. It's called uh, the Messianic Apocalypse. And it says this, For the heavens and the earth will listen to his Messiah, Mashiach, the Anointed One. And all that is in them will not turn away from the precept of the set apart one. So it's abundantly clear that Yeshua is El, the Son, the Son of Yahweh, from the heavens. Okay, this is why the heavens and the earth will listen to him because he created them. Hallelujah. Next, his teaching will be in accordance with the will of Elohim. His teaching will be in accordance with the will of Elohim. John chapter 7 verse 40 in the Hebrew. John chapter 7 verse 40 in the Hebrew. Then some of the crowd of the people, when they heard his Yeshua's word said, this is the true prophet, the true Navi. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 in the Samaritan. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 through 19 says, I will raise up a prophet. I will raise up a prophet from among their brothers like you. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall come about that whoever will not listen to his words, which he shall speak on my behalf, I myself will require it of him. Now, let's go to John chapter 12, verse 49 through 50 in the Hebrew. For I do not speak of myself, but the Father who sent me, he commanded me to speak and to command, and I know that his commandment is everlasting life. And that which I speak is identical to what the Father speaks, so I speak. So again, Yeshua is only speaking the words that Yahweh told him to speak, which is uh, something that I've always touched on, is that Yeshua cannot bring a new teaching. When people say that he did away with the Torah and all of these other things, it's impossible because Yeshua spoke the words of his father. So he could not bring a new teaching. Okay. So therefore his teaching is in accordance with the will of Elohim, just as the prophecy of, uh, of Aaron says. But we're not, we're not done yet. John chapter 7, verse 14 through 16 in the Hebrew says, but in the middle of the feast, Yeshua went up into the sanctuary and taught. And the Jews, the Yehudim, were astonished and said, How does this one who did not learn know literature? Yeshua answered and said, My teaching is not mine, but it is from him who sent me. You see that? Yeshua said his teaching is not his, but it's Yahweh's teaching. So how could he do away with the Torah? Yeshua says in Matthew 5, 17, he came to confirm the Torah, not to abolish it. You see, so what people are doing is twisting his words, and even the ancient prophecy of Aaron is confirming this fact. Again, Matthew 5, 17 in the Hebrew. Do not think that I came to throw down the Torah and the prophets. On the contrary, I came to confirm. I came to confirm. One thing we have to realize is that um, Malachi 3, 6, Yahweh says, I am Yahweh, I do not change. Hebrews 13, 8, Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Our Elohim does not change. So therefore, his teaching is going to stay the same. Man is the one that twists his, all, twists his words up into pieces. But again, his teaching will be in accordance with the will of Elohim. And we see plenty of scriptures proving that as he did not speak his own words. He spoke the words of his father, Yahweh. His eternal sun will burn bright. The fire will be kindled in all the corners of the earth. Isaiah, Yeshayahu chapter 42, verse 1 through 4 in the complete Jewish scriptures. Here is my servant whom I support, my chosen one, and whom I take pleasure. I have put my rock, my spirit on him. He will bring justice to the nations. 
He will not cry or shout. No one will hear his voice in the streets. He will not snap off a broken reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. He will bring forth justice according to emet, truth. He will not weaken or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth. And the coastlands wait for his Torah. And the coastlands are the Gentiles who are waiting for his Torah. And I touched on this in the previous message. Is that the Gentiles were waiting to receive his Torah. To obey it. Not waiting to reject it and say it's done away with. So there's another match there. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6. In the complete Jewish scriptures. He has said. It is not enough that you are merely my servant to raise up the tribes of Yaakov, Jacob, and to restore the offspring of Israel. I will also make you a light to the nations so my salvation can spread to the ends of the earth. Luke chapter 2, verse 29 through 32 in the complete Jewish scriptures. Now Yahweh, according to your word, your servant is at peace as you let him go. For I have seen with my own eyes your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light that will bring revelation to the Gentiles and esteem to your people, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So again, the fire will be kindled in all the corners of the earth. Now, then the darkness will vanish from the earth and the deep darkness from dry land. Then the darkness will vanish from the earth and the deep darkness from the dry land. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the mitzvah, the command, is a lamp. Torah is light. Now, darkness represents wickedness and or ignorance of the people not knowing the true way. But Yeshua, the light who is the living Torah, teaches it to them. John chapter 1, verse 4 through 5 in the Hebrew. For he is life. This life is the lamp of men. And the lamp does shine in the gloom. But the gloom and darkness do not have power over it. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 through 16 in the Hebrew. When Yeshua heard that Yochanan, John, had, had been seized, he turned his face to Galilee and left Nazareth, Nazareth, his city. And he sojourned in the city of Kephar Nahum, by the, by the seashore of the districts of Zebulun and Naphtali, in order that the prophecy of Isaiah the prophet should be fulfilled, saying, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali is again restored and the way of the sea of Jordan Valley of Galilee. The people who abide in the way of thick darkness saw light and a shining lamp appeared unto those who abide in the shadow of death. So who abide in the way of thick darkness. We, either, the, we know what the Torah is. It's the, uh, Psalms chapter 119 verse 1. The, Torah, the way is the Torah. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahweh. So if you're walking in thick darkness and in the way of thick darkness, that's the opposite, right? So that's why they saw a lamp, a shining lamp. Now, which is uh, the prophecy from Isaiah. Isaiah 9, 1 in the complete Jewish scripture says, The people living in darkness have seen a great light upon those living in the land that lies in the shadow of death. Light has dawned. So again, then the darkness will vanish from the earth and deep darkness from the dry land. Uh, then... They will speak many words against him. Matthew chapter 12, verse 10 in the Hebrew. And when he had passed on further, he came to their house of assembly. And there was a man with the hand dried out 
And they asked him if it was proper to cleanse him on the Shabbat in order that they could slander him. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 through 24 in the Hebrew. And then they sent a Satan-possessed one to him, blind and dumb. And he healed him in such a way that he spoke and saw. And all the people were astonished and looked and said, How could this not be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man does not drive out the demons except by the power of uh, Baal Zebul, the prince of the demons. John chapter 8, verse 48 through 59 in the Hebrew. So the Jews answered and said, Do we rightfully say that you are a Samaritan? You have some Hashatan. Yeshua answered, There is not a demon in me, but I honor my father while you despise me. I do not seek my honor. It is another who seeks it. And he judges, and he judges true judgment. I say to you in truth that if one establishes my words, he will never die in eternity. Then the Jews said, Now we know how Shatan holds on to you. Abraham is dead, and the prophets are dead. And now you say that if one keeps your words, death will not happen to him forever? Are you greater than Abraham, our father, who died, and the prophets who died? Who is it that exalts you with these honors except you yourself? John chapter 9, verse 13 through 16 in the Hebrew. Then they brought him the blind man. Then they brought him, which is the blind man, to the Pharisees and said to Yeshua, had made clay on the Shabbat and opened the man's eyes. So the Pharisees asked him, in what manner did he restore your sight for you? And he said unto them, He made clay and placed it on my eyes, and I stood up and saw. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from El, for he does not keep the Shabbat. Again, this is oral Torah traditions of the Pharisees. This is why they said he broke the Shabbat, because he broke their version of the Shabbat. But others said, how is a transgressing man able to do these signs? So there was a great division among them. Testament of Levi, chapter 16, verse 3. And you will persecute righteous men and hate the reverent, and you will despise the words of the faithful. And a man who renews the Torah and the power of the Most High that's Yeshua, referring to Matthew 5, 17 through 19, you will call him a deceiver. Matthew chapter 27, verse 62 through 63 in the Hebrew. And the day which came after the Passover, the chiefs of the Pharisees and the priests came to Pilate saying, Master, we remember that that deceiver said that he would stand up alive. In other words, resurrect on the third day. So this all matches again what Aaron said. They will speak many words against him. Next, there will be numerous lies. They will invent stories about him. They will say shameful things about him. John chapter 8, verse 41 in the Hebrew. You do the work of your father. Then they said to him, We, we were not born out of fornication. We have one heir and one father. So the Pharisees, they assumed that Yeshua was born out of fornication and said a very shameful thing about him, not understanding that he was born of the Ruach HaKodesh through the Virgin Mary. Just as we see it written in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to, through 20 in the Hebrew. And the birth of Yeshua Mashiach was thus, while the mother of Yeshua Mashiach was betrothed, and Yosef, Joseph, before they were joined together. She was pregnant from the Ruach HaKodesh. 
So Joseph, being righteous, but not wanting to deliver her to death, rather wanted to go to divorce her in secret. And while he was planning this, the messenger of Yahweh appeared unto Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for what she conceived, she conceived by the rock HaKodesh. So we can see they took a shot at Yeshua saying that they were not born out of fornication. Now, Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 through 15 in the Hebrew. And when they went, some of the guards came to Jerusalem, Jerusalem and reported to the chiefs of the priests everything that had happened. Then they gathered the elders and held a council, and they gave a great amount of silver to the guards that they should say that his, being Yeshua's disciples, came in the night while they were sleeping and stole him. And they said, when Pilate gets to know this, we will attain that you will be safe. So they took the silver and did what they told them. And these things are reported among the Jews to this day. So instead of accepting the fact that Yeshua was not a deceiver, but rather he is the Messiah, the Mashiach, who was prophesied, who died and rose on the third day, just as he said he would, they chose to reject him and invent a story that his body was stolen by the disciples, and this lie has been passed down ever since. So again, they will, there will be numerous lies. They will invent stories about him. They will say shameful things about him. He will overthrow this evil generation, and there will be great wrath. Luke chapter 19, verse 41 through 44 in the complete Jewish scriptures. When Yeshua had come closer and could see the city, he wept over it saying, if you only knew today what is needed for Shalom. But for now, and Shalom is peace. But for now, it is hidden from your sight. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you, encircle you, hem you in on every side, and dash you to the ground you and your children within your walls, leaving not one stone standing on another. And all because you did not recognize your opportunity when Elohim offered it. The opportunity of repentance. They had a whole 40 years to repent and they chose not to repent. And of course, this was what I talked about in the other message is the, the destruction of the second temple in 70 AD. Testament of Levi, chapter 16, verse 3 through 4, matches it. And a man who renews the Torah, Matthew 5, 17 through 20, and the power of the Most High, you will call him a deceiver. And at last you will rush upon him and kill him, not knowing his dignity, taking innocent blood through wickedness upon your heads. And your set apart places will be laid waste even to the ground because of him. He will overthrow his evil generation and there will be great wrath. And when he arises, there will be falsehood. When he arises, there will be falsehood. Testament of Levi, chapter 16, verse 1 through 2. And now I have learned in the book of Hanak, Enoch, that for 70 weeks you will go astray and profane the priesthood, and pollute the slaughterings. And you will make void the Torah, and set the words of the prophets at nothing but evil perverseness. So, making void the Torah is their oral Torah uh, traditions, the Babylonian Talmud, which matches what Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 through 10 in the Hebrew. This people which honors me with words, but their heart is far from me. They honor me in vain, imposing your instructions and commandments of the men. So again, when he arises, there will be falsehood. Violence. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14, the complete Jewish scripture says, Just as many were appalled at him, because he was so disfigured that he didn't even seem human and simply no longer looked like a man. That's how badly Yeshua was beaten. And this was prophesied by Isaiah before it happened. Matthew chapter 27, verse 24 through 35 in the Hebrew. 
And when Pilate saw that he was not reaching anything, but that they still cried out, he took water and washed his hands before the people and said, I am, I am he who does not know, meaning innocent of the blood of the righteous man. Take heed for yourselves. So all the total answered, let his blood be upon us and upon our sons. And then he released by, by even, by Evan, that's what is in the Hebrew instead of Barabbas, by even and delivered to them Yeshua, beaten to lift, to lift him up on the warp and wolf, the execution state. Now the servants of Pilate had taken Yeshua to the great house of the judges, and the people gathered around, and they stripped him, and covered him with a garment of fine red linen, and set a crown of thorns upon his head, and a reed in the right hand, and bowed the knee before him, saying, May Yahweh save you, king of the Yehudim, Jews. And they spat on him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. Verse 35. And when they had hanged him up, they divided his clothes among themselves by the lot. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 in the complete Jewish scriptures. You stupid Galatians, who has put you under his spell? Before your very eyes, Yeshua the Messiah was clearly portrayed as having been put to death as a criminal. Put to death as a criminal, though he was without transgression. Transgression. And finally, the people will wander astray in his days and be confounded. They will wander in confusion with no direction because they killed the living Torah, who is the light to the path and the only way to eternal life. They chose to walk in the oral Torah versus the truth. They chose to walk in darkness and in confusion instead of the light of the truth. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 14, the complete Jewish scripture says, He which is Yeshua, is there to be a sanctuary. But for both the houses of Yisrael, he will be a stone to stumble over, a rock obstructing their way, a, sh a strap and a snare for the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. Simon blessed them and said to the child's mother, Mary, this child will cause many in Israel to fall and to rise. So to fall is for those who reject Yeshua and to rise for those who accept Yeshua. He will become a sign whom people will speak against. Moreover, a sword will pierce your own heart too. And this will happen in order to reveal many people's inmost thoughts. And I tell you, this is the truth. Yeshua's words uh, reveal the thoughts of people. Yeshua's words cut deep. Covenant of Damascus, um, on page 24, number 3, in, the, in Ken Johnson's translation says, Scornful men arose, sprang lying waters on Israel to lead them astray, to wander in the wilderness, where there is no way. Psalms 107, verse 40. So, the, it says that, they will wander in the wilderness where there is no way because they had lying water sprayed on them. So the oral Torah is lying, right? Lying water. To lead them astray to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. So again, Psalm chapter 119 verse 1, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahweh. So the Torah is the way. So they wandered in the wilderness, meaning they were lost to dry up without the Torah. And without the Torah and Yeshua being the living Torah, there is no life. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5, complete Jewish scriptures. You are to observe my laws and rulings. If a person does them, he will have life through them. I am Yahweh. And then Yeshua says in John, Yochanan chapter 14, verse 6. Yeshua says, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the people will wander astray in his days and be confounded. So in conclusion, refusing to accept the free gift of atonement that Yeshua gave us by shedding his blood for our iniquities is not an option at all for anybody in this world. 
Yeshua is the only way to eternal life. And this is an ancient truth known by our ancestors throughout the scriptures and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And again, we see more confirmation from the Testament of Aaron found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, as always, may Yahweh Barak bless you in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Shalom.